Right, today on Easy Bakes, I'm going to show you something actually which is very close to my heart. My mother does a ginger biscuit, which I can't argue, it tastes amazing. This one's slightly different. Actually, very simple to do. All we've got is ginger, we've got bicarb, we've got plain flour, we've got sugar, we've got golden syrup and butter, and that's it. Now set your oven to 170 fan or 190 non-fan, and all you need is a bowl and a mixer, and a couple of trays to put your biscuits on, so it's pretty straightforward. Now to start with, flour in the bowl, straight in, then we've got some sugar, straight in, some butter, don't you melt the butter? You don't have to. I'm just going to rub this in slightly to start it off. And this will help. It's only a bit of crumbing. And it, it, this is where the kids can get involved, you know, and start getting in and get baking. Anything to get them involved. Basically, before you add the real liquid, which is the golden syrup, just get your hands in there and break it down a little bit. And it just helps, does, starts it, starts it all off before you actually use the hand mixer. So again, just break this down. This is the fun bit. This is the hardest bit. That shows how easy it is. Now again, you see it slowly start to go more yellow. And that's because of the sugar and the butter going into a white flour. I'm staring down at my cat at the moment, who's, who's watching me very carefully. <laughs> you can have a biscuit later, yeah? So again, crumb this down nice and small. Get rid of those big lumps. Just makes your job a little bit easier when you turn the mixer on. Quite therapeutic actually. There we are. I think I'm happy with most of that. Now I'm going to add the golden syrup. So while that goes in there, if you want to go and make yourself a cup of tea. Such a beautiful colour. I'm going to add Two teaspoons of the ginger. And what it's is just, this? This is just ginger powder, basically. This is the thing that's going to give you the kick. So I like ginger. I love fresh ginger. One of the things you can actually do is add other types of ginger. So you can have the, the soaked ginger, you know, the stuff in the syrup. You, a little bit of that to it also adds another element of ginger to it. but. I think it's just beautiful. The ginger's really good for your gut as well. And I've got half a teaspoon of bicarb going in there. There's your rise nation going in there straight away. Okay, now you need to use your mixer. If you haven't got a mixer, you can do it by hand. It just takes a little bit longer, that's all. So again, put your mixer straight in. It will turn to a, a sort of dough paste pretty quickly. My, my whole philosophy on baking is get your hands in there as much as you possibly can. And I'm tempted to get my hands in there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> all you're doing is crushing it together. It's all mixed in together already. It's just been blended in. So now all you're doing is beginning to bring the form, the thing into one big dough ball. And just by pushing that butter together, it pushes everything else together, the flour, the sugars, and they all start blending in really well together. Now this thing will spread in the oven when you bake it. It's quite normal for a biscuit to do that. What's the difference between a biscuit and a cookie? The difference between a biscuit and a cookie, now for all you American friends of mine who are watching, basically it's very similar. In, in the UK we call a cookie a soft biscuit. And it means it's normally got a lot of butter in there. Butter gives you a softness. Sugar gives you a snap in a biscuit. The beauty with biscuits generally in the UK, all things are biscuits, but obviously we call cookies soft and biscuits tend to be um, more crispy than not. So that's the main difference. It's the language more than anything else. So now you've got a, a little dough ball together. Now what I'm going to do is divide it up and put it onto my trays. Make little balls. So we're looking for about 30 grams, um, roughly an ounce um, per ball. 
I would say that yeah, these were pretty much walnut size. Now I'm not measuring, I'm sort of just using my, my eye to be able to produce them. It's a bit like clay, it feels like clay. The more you, you manipulate it, the warm your hands are. This is where warm hands work. The warm hands soften the butter and incorporate the whole thing together. So you end up with a beautifully small ball. It is, it is walnut size, it's not quite ping pong ball size. It's a bit like a squash ball actually, similar size to a squash ball. But if you make them slightly bigger, it's not necessarily a problem. The only thing that will change is the bake in the oven. Because the bigger it'll be, the slightly longer it'll take. So it could be another 30 seconds or a minute if it's slightly bigger. They normally take about 10, 12, 30 minutes in an oven. I'm spreading them out because they will spread out. That's the idea of the biscuit. They will end up beginning to flow and they sit and open up. You just put a little bit of pressure on them to flatten them slightly, but most of the work will be done in the actual oven itself. So basically you repeat that, so you get um, about 18. I think that's two nines. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in school. So if it breaks up when you're rolling it, all I'm doing is my hand to create the roll. It sits in the middle of your hand and you, you've got a natural cup there. Place them down. So on the baking tray itself, I'm using baking parchment. So you want to use baking parchment, not grease proof. It's the best thing to use. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what's underneath it? Underneath it, I've just got a little bit of oil. You can use butter or oil, and it just helps keep the paper flat. So when you put these in the oven, if you've got nothing underneath there, what tends to happen is the heat can blow underneath, certainly in a fan oven, and just blow the paper up. And you don't want anything to interfere with the bake itself. So again, put a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter on there, it just keeps it nice and flat. Make sure they don't roll around too much. Just put a bit of pressure on them. And they'll get baked now for around 12 minutes or so and they'll come out looking absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's have a look at the, yeah, they're done. Just over 12 minutes. Look at them. So there we have them. Now you obviously can't eat them now, they're too hot and actually very soft. So you need to leave them to cool gently on the tray. It takes about an hour. Get your cup of tea ready. Enjoy dunking. Okay, looking forward to this. Cup of tea. Dunking your ginger biscuit. a proper ginger biscuit. Dunked into a tea, nothing better. And that just shows you how easy it is to bake my ginger biscuits. Now, there are plenty of other easy bake recipes on my YouTube channel, along with these beautiful ginger biscuits. Click subscribe, click like, enjoy all the recipes and get baking. Now leave me to enjoy my biscuit. Oh, delicious.